I found 19 work from home jobs that you can do at night and I can almost guarantee most of these you've never heard of before. And also a lot of these are going to be very high paying and easy to get into and most of them mm -hmm. do not require a college degree. So if you appreciate me making this type of video, go ahead and let me know by gently tapping that like button and let's jump into it right now. So the first one on the list is going to be an IRA agent. Now you've probably never heard of this before, but this is basically where you are the eyes of someone who can't see. You're basically going to be helping someone out who is blind. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Shane, this is a video about work from home jobs. How the heck can I do this if I'm helping someone out who's blind? Wouldn't I have to go to their house? And yeah, there are a lot of IRA agent positions where you do go to someone's house, but there's also a lot of them where you work remote. So for instance, there's a position right here where they basically use Google Glass technology. And whenever a visually impaired person needs some help seeing something, they'll call a line and the Google Glass technology will live stream whatever they are looking at. And then the IRA agent will describe to them in vivid detail what's on their screen or maybe what's on a restaurant menu. Now, there's also less sophisticated versions of this where blind people can just use their phone, for instance, and just point it wherever they're looking. And then there's some circumstances where the IRA agent is with a single person the entire day. There's other circumstances where they're only used here or there. And over 285 million people in the world are visually impaired. So the demand for visual interpretation services is growing. And this is something I've mentioned over and over again on this channel. And I do feel almost like I'm a broken record for people who watch this channel regularly. But there are thousands and thousands of these weird little niche medical careers. And a lot of these niche medical careers are relatively easy easy to get into, they pay really well, they have great benefits, and there's a ton of demand. And this is yet another example of that. And IRA agents make $86,000 a year, so it's extremely well compensated work. And you can get started with this by going to ira.io slash careers, then you scroll down and click IRA agent, and then you click apply to become an agent. Now, some of the pros of this one are it's a very rewarding experience as you are giving a ton of value to someone else. There also tends to be pretty flexible hours because you're on call waiting for someone to need you, and it's very competitive pay, especially for an entry level job. Some of the cons are it can be emotionally taxing. You do have a high level of responsibility and it requires a lot of patience. But overall, I'll give this one an opportunity score of nine out of 10. Next is going to be an overnight intake specialist. And an overnight intake specialist basically takes incoming calls and they gather essential information on something like a legal case. So they would delve deep into the detail of injuries, damages, and insurance coverage to evaluate the validity of each case. So this is another one one where you're basically on call waiting for someone to call into you. So there's probably going to be a lot of downtime. And in many cases, you can find these types of positions again at night. Now, this one is also an entry level job and it pays about $44,000 a year. Now, this one's pretty straightforward in terms of applying for it. You basically go to any job board out there, indeed.com, for instance, you type in overnight intake specialist, and there's going to be a lot of opportunities. Now, some of the pros of this one are you do play a vital role in the legal process. You have the opportunity to work from the comfort of your home and you can even work at night and you get to get your foot in the door in the legal industry if that's something that you want to go into in the future. So this is a great entry level job to learn the ropes. Some of the cons here are it does require intense attention to detail and it might take a toll on you emotionally. So I'll give this one an opportunity score of 7.5 out of 10. Now the next one on the list is going to be a subject matter expert, which is kind of a weird name for a job. And basically what you are is you're almost like a consultant who's on call about a very, very specific specific subject matter. So for instance, you might be a subject matter expert for a specific type of car that a car dealership sells. And you would provide crucial support and consultation if someone, for instance, wrecks the car and they're you know, bringing it in and trying to fix it. There's also a lot of opportunities for subject matter experts in the financial industry and many other industries out there. But subject matter experts make about $79,000 a year. And it's another one where you're basically just on call and therefore you can make money working at night. Now for this one, obviously you have to be very, very good at a particular subject. So it's definitely not an entry level role. But if you happen to have been working in an industry for a long period of time, there's a good chance you could become a subject matter expert in that industry. So some of the pros of this one are you provide crucial support to whatever companies you work with. You can also utilize your expertise to build relationships and network. And there's very competitive compensation, especially considering the fact that a lot of the time you're basically on call, so you're not doing any work. Some of the cons are you truly do have to be an expert on the subject. And then whenever somebody does call you with a problem, 
you have to have very strong communication and problem solving skills. So overall, because of the fact that this one is a little bit harder to get into, I will give it an eight out of 10 opportunity score. Next is going to be an operations monitoring specialist. And this is basically where you monitor operational dashboards and customer support at night. And sometimes you might also do it over the weekend. Now, this is a position that's open in many different industries. For instance, there's a lot of technology related positions like this. And there's also going to be a wide range of pay, but I would say on the lower end of the spectrum, you're going to make around $46,000 a year. And this is not like a leadership role. You're basically just monitoring things, making sure nothing goes wrong. And if you see anything that's out of hand, that's when you would contact leadership. So some of the pros of this one are there's lots of opportunity for remote flexible work. And your focus is going to be on customer support and basically just making sure that everything runs smoothly. Some of the cons of this one are it does require a high level of vigilance and problem solving skills. And you need to be very good at figuring things out on your own. But overall, I'll give this one an opportunity score of seven out of 10. Next is going to be an on-call program specialist. And this is basically a customer support representative that's a little bit more specialized. And you're gonna be providing crucial support and assistance to those in need during the nocturnal hours. Now you may be providing support for customers or in many cases, you'll be providing support for people who work on your team. And program specialists make about $48,000 a year. But there is a wide range depending on what industry you work in. So some of the pros are there is a lot of opportunity for flexible remote work and you can get a lot of satisfaction out of helping people when no one else can help them. Some of the cons are it does put a lot of pressure on you in case something goes wrong in the middle of the night and it can be relatively boring. But overall, I'll give this one an opportunity score of 7.5 out of 10. Next is going to be a deposit operation analyst. And this is basically someone that works for a bank and makes sure that all deposits happen seamlessly, even if they're in the middle of the night. So they're gonna be updating details, ensuring that documents are up to scratch, managing discrepancies, and essentially keeping the deposit world spinning, all while handling the pressures of regulatory demands. And according to recent statistics, over 50% of US adults use digital banking and 97% of Gen Z and millennials are using it. So digital banking is the future. And you make a really nice salary of about $65,000 a year. Now, while a lot of job postings do prefer a bachelor's degree, there are some that don't require one. So this is definitely another really good one to look into. Pros of this one, high demand, flexible schedule, and it's perfect for a night shift, and you get a diverse set of tasks. Cons here are you do have high responsibility, and generally speaking, banking isn't necessarily the most exciting industry to work in. But overall, I'll give this one an opportunity score of 8.5 out of 10. Next on the list is going to be a night auditor. And a night auditor is someone who oversees financial records, typically at night. And that actually tends to be a really good time to audit financial records because there's no transactions that are happening usually. And it's not just financial records. You could also audit hotels for safety regulations or different healthcare related businesses, et cetera. And this is a career that you do not have to have a college degree to do. You can get into it without any previous experience. So it's entry level, but it pays around $38,000 a year. So some of the pros of this one are there's less work related disruptions at night, and it does tend to be a fairly chill job. A con of this one is it does require consistent accuracy. Overall, I'll give this one an opportunity score of seven out of 10. Next, let's talk about customer experience agents. This is a very interesting position because it's not just like a customer service representative. It's someone who follows the customer through their entire journey when they're engaging with a company or a brand. So it could be the absolute first moment they discover the company when they first click onto the website. You know, where do their eyes go? What do they like about the website? What do they not like? What are their expectations? What's their initial impression, et cetera, all the way through when a customer ends up leaving a company. And they follow that entire journey and see where they can optimize the process. And customer experience agents make about $42,000 a year. And some of the pros of this one are you have an opportunity to refine customer service and customer experience skills, and you get to engage in a diverse set of tasks. Some of the cons here are you have to balance customer satisfaction with company policy, and staying up to date with the ever evolving online shopping trends can be difficult. But overall, this is a really interesting one. I'll give it a seven out of 10 opportunity score. Next one is going to be a reservation specialist. And this is basically someone who assists customers with booking flights, reserving hotel rooms, and securing meeting places. And because of the fact that a lot of the time people are gonna be booking things from different time zones, there's a lot of opportunity for remote and nighttime work. And reservation specialists make about $48,000 a year. So yeah, another really good one, doesn't require much experience, a college degree, anything like that. So I'll give this one an eight out of 10 opportunity score. Next on the list is going to be a night 
editor. And this is basically the person who is responsible for finalizing things before they go out in the morning. So something like a newspaper or a magazine. So it's actually pretty difficult to get that newspaper delivered to you at 6 a.m. right when you wake up, right? Because the information has to be accurate. You have to make sure there's no misspellings or English errors. And that's a lot easier said than done, but that's where the night editors come in. And night editors make about $49,000 per year. So here's an opportunity for someone who's hiring. I'll put it on the screen. And by the way, you can make a lot more than that depending on your expertise and the industry or the niche that you go into. But overall, I'll give this one an opportunity score of eight out of 10. Next is going to be an overnight care advocate. And this is yet another one of those super random healthcare related careers you can go into. And this is basically exactly what it sounds like. You provide support to patients overnight. And this could be anything from healthcare issues all the way to handling insurance claims. And care advocates make about $41,000 a year. Here's an opportunity for work. I'll put it up on the screen. So yeah, $41,000 a year, not bad for an entry level job. It's also great if you're planning on working in the medical industry in the future, I'll give this one a 7.5 out of 10 opportunity score. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, if I've brought up some that you have never heard of before that you really liked, go ahead and share this with a friend who might need to see it as well. Next one on the list is another really good random medical related career, and that's going to be medical scribe. And basically, this is going to be the Robin Hood to the doctor's Batman. You're kind of going to be like the doctor's sidekick that writes down whatever they say, and then you create and provide concise and accurate medical summaries. This could include patient histories, medical exams, treatment plans, and all of this is done to allow the doctor to focus on patient care. And this is an amazing career if you want to become a doctor or a high level medical professional in the future, because you get to work directly with medical doctors. And medical scribes make about $43,000 a year. So yeah, this is another really good one. Um, one of the big problems in the medical industry, you may have you know gone into a doctor visit, especially if you live in the United States, and you notice that they're just typing on their computer the whole time, they're barely even making eye contact with you. And that's because they have to take down all that information. But if they have a medical scribe, they can take a lot of that workload off. And that allows them to actually pay attention to their patients and work more closely with them. So really good career. It's also great if you want to get some experience in the healthcare industry for getting into a higher level position later on. I'll give this one an 8.5 out of 10 opportunity score. Next is going to be an after hours coordinator. And this is typically a position where you're going to be working in the medical field and you're going to be providing what's known as third shift support to caregivers and providers. And basically, you're just going to be making sure that everything runs smoothly during the night shift. And this could include taking sick calls, filling staff shortages, dealing with disciplinary issues, and dealing with emergencies. And after hours, coordinators make about $43,000 a year. So again, this is one of the thousands of different healthcare related careers where you can get into it without much experience, and it pays relatively well. I'll give this one an opportunity score of 7.5 out of 10. Next on the list is going to be a case manager. Here's an opportunity for a job for this one. And a case manager is typically going to work directly with a caregiver, and they're going to offer them education, personalized and emotional support. So they're kind of like a GPS for caregivers to navigate through the healthcare system. And case managers make about $50,000 a year. So yet another one, this one tends to be more in the mental health side of things. So kind of like social work. So you typically are going to have to have a degree for this one. So I'll give it a seven out of 10 opportunity score. Next is going to be a bilingual telephone interviewer. Here's an opportunity for this one. I'll put it up on the screen. And this one is basically exactly what it sounds like. You are going to be providing bilingual telephone interpretation. And bilingual interviewers make about $43,000 a year. So this one can be especially lucrative for some of the major languages like Spanish, Mandarin Chinese, Russian, or Arabic. And there's just a lot of opportunities out there, especially as the world becomes more of a globalized economy. So overall, I'll give this one a 7.5 out of 10 opportunity score. Next on the list is going to be a ghostwriter. Now there's a lot of different types of ghostwriters out there. But basically what you're going to do as a ghostwriter is you basically need to capture the voice of a person and be able to write just like they would. So a lot of people who write books, for instance, actually use ghostwriters. So the ghostwriter might interview them about certain experiences they had during their life. And if it's a biography or a memoir, for instance, they'll stay in contact with the person and ask them questions here and there. And then the client will probably review the book and make sure that they like it. But the ghostwriter does like 95% of the heavy lifting and the hard work. There's also Twitter ghostwriters. That's another really common one that's popping up. For instance, there was this ghostwriter that made $200,000 
dollars last year writing tweets for venture capitalists but ghost writers make on average about fifty four thousand dollars a year so this is honestly one that's new and emerging and i think there's a lot of opportunity here i'm going to give this one a nine out of ten opportunity score because if you have the right type of expertise you can be a ghostwriter for someone who has a ton of money and make like two hundred thousand dollars a year working five days a week like the Twitter ghostwriter did. Next one on the list is going to be a script writer. And specifically, I'm gonna be talking about a YouTube script writer. This is another career that I think has a ton of opportunity. I think it's highly underrated. There are YouTubers out there that are making tens of millions of dollars a year, and they're spending a significant amount of time writing their own scripts. And if you can just help them do the research part, or just help them with maybe 50% of the script writing process and save them like five hours a week, that would definitely be worth a full-time salary. And there's this guy, George Blackman, for instance, who makes really good money six figures a year and he's written scripts for Ali Abdal for instance but on average script writers make about $89,000 a year but that's just script writers in general not necessarily YouTube script writers so yeah I'll give this one an opportunity score of nine out of ten as well next let's talk about one that you know I have to mention because it's just a really good career I'm sure everyone knows about this but front-end engineer so a type of software engineer that works on the front end which is what people see so for instance on the front end of a website would be what you see when you look at the website Front-end engineers make about $109,000 a year. And yeah, this one is fantastic. It used to be the absolute best career to go into. It used to be that if you just had a pulse and you knew how to do just the most basic of basic coding, you could get a job. Now you actually do have to know your stuff. So there's a lot of people out there that just complain about this one incessantly. There's like an entire community of people who complain about how hard it is to get a job. And it's honestly because they just don't know how to do their stuff. The standard of this one was so low that now that the standard is at a normal or probably not even at a normal level yet, a lot of people complain about it. But still, opportunity score here is gonna be great. I'll give it a 9.5 out of 10. Next one on the list is going to be a death desktop administrator. And this is basically someone who's responsible for managing the computer systems within an organization. And desktop administrators make about $75,000 a year. So this is another one of those IT related jobs. It's not quite an entry level job. It's a little bit above entry level. So you'd probably start off at something like IT help desk and then move into this role. But it doesn't require a college degree, doesn't require that much experience, relatively easy to get into. And by the way, if you do want to get into IT, my friend Josh made a fantastic IT help desk course where he basically helps people without any previous experience, any college degree, get their first job in IT. And he's helped a bunch of people do this. You can check out some of the interviews on my channel. And he does have a free training you can check out. And I'll put a link to that down in the description as well as the pinned comment below. But yeah, this one is another fantastic one. I'll give it a 9 out of 10 opportunity score. By the way, if you haven't seen it already, I did make a video on the seven remote jobs that are almost always hiring. And you can check that out by clicking right here.